Oftentimes, these are very vague symptoms. Typically, it's a problem that's found in older and middle or, or middle-aged cats, and they will often present maybe with weight loss. They're not going to be thriving and doing so well. They might have some diarrhea. That's not always very obvious. They might be vomiting as well. Vitamin B12 is essential for so many processes within a cat's body, and deficiency might be more common than we think. Welcome to the Call the Vet Show, the podcast that helps keep your furry family as healthy as possible so they can live the full and happy life they deserve. And here's your host, veterinarian Dr. Alex Avery. Well, hello out there. Welcome back to another episode of the Call the Vet Show. I hope you're keeping well. I hope you're keeping safe. And I hope your furry family is just as happy and healthy. I'm following up last week's fantastic FIP episode with another question about cats. So don't worry, dog owners. I've got a brilliant episode coming up next week where I'm actually talking about how we can reduce stress in the vet clinic. So make sure you tune into that. That's just as relevant for cat owners too. But today we're talking about B12 deficiency. So vitamin B12 is really important for a lot of different aspects of the body. But it may be that actually we're not recognising it as often as we should. And certainly that's the experience from today's caller, which was Elizabeth. So Elizabeth is also an author and she has her own book called The Cat's Breath Smells Like Dessert, A Tale of Four Sassy Strays that teaches children all about empathy. So if you've got children and that sounds like something you're interested in, then I'll leave the link in the show notes to Elizabeth's book. But for now, let's get into today's episode. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Jane, and my cat Hobbs was recently diagnosed with extremely low B12 levels. He didn't have the usual symptom of diarrhea, but he did have a complete lack of appetite. He seemed confused at times and would howl like he was lost and didn't have his usual energy. He is now getting weekly B12 injections, and his appetite has greatly improved. I thought your listeners would be interested in learning more about B12 deficiency in cats, especially older ones, as symptoms of low B12 levels are often dismissed as signs of normal aging. As well, I think it's important to test B12 even if diarrhea isn't occurring. Hobbs is a perfect example of how a usual symptom of a particular illness can be absent. Thank you. So thanks for sharing your experience with us, Elizabeth. And I think it does raise a few important questions and hopefully some answers as well. So let's start off by thinking what exactly vitamin B12 is. And it's also a vitamin that's known as cobalamin. So they're one and the same thing and you might hear them used interchangeably. But vitamin B12, it's a water soluble vitamin that helps to maintain the health of a huge number of different processes within the body. So it's important for the immune system, for nervous functions, function and cognitive function as well and the big one that we think of it as is intestinal tract health and in cats actually vitamin b12 or cobalamin is used as a marker of gut health. The other thing that vitamin B12 can do is actually act as an appetite stimulant, which I think is important when we think about what happened with Elizabeth's cat. So What then causes low vitamin B12? Well, normally this vitamin is absorbed in the gut and so a disruption to normal gut function will reduce the amount of vitamin B12 that's being absorbed by the intestines and that will lead to a depletion of the normal body stores which will then result in a deficiency in this vitamin within the body as a whole. Now as I said B12 and low B12 levels are normally associated with intestinal health and digestive function and so the most common diseases that we see B12 deficiency in are inflammatory bowel disease, uh, intestinal cancer and the most common one here is something called a small cell lymphoma which can actually be very hard to differentiate differentiate from inflammatory bowel disease, um, liver disease, and then pancreatic disease. So pancreatitis, pancreatic inflammation, or what we'd call exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, where the digestive processes of the pancreas are not being fulfilled normally. So if a cat does become deficient in vitamin B12, what are the symptoms that you might notice as their owner? Well, it can be challenging and and oftentimes these are very vague symptoms. Typically, it's a problem that's found in older and middle or or middle aged cats and they will often present maybe with weight loss. They're not going to be thriving and doing so well. They might have some diarrhea. That's not always very obvious. They might be vomiting as well. They can also be off their food and then you might also find a thickening of the intestine 
intestines, which is something that your vet is obviously going to feel if they're palpating, if they're feeling your cat's tummy. Interestingly, in humans with B12 deficiency, then that's also been associated with dementia, which might explain why Elizabeth's cat was constantly crying and vocalising. Uh, it's also associated with cardiovascular disease and also certain types of anemia, although that doesn't seem to be the case in our cat population. Thankfully, though, vitamin B12 deficiency is pretty easy to diagnose as it just involves a simple blood test that can be sent to the laboratory and the answer will typically come back within a day or two. Treatment can be a little bit more challenging because it's not just a one injection, one pill and that's those levels maintained. We need to ideally identify and tackle the initial cause. So if there's an inflammatory bowel disease, if there is an intestinal cancer, then ideally we need to start treatment for that disease so that absorption can then resume and your cat's B12 levels can be maintained after we've supplemented them. So treating the initial B12 deficiency is a little bit more labour intensive if you like. We can supplement them orally so we can give a daily tablet of B12 but that has to happen for 10 to 12 weeks. So that's a long course of treatment and tableting your cat every day for that length of time can definitely be challenging for most of us who own cats. The alternative thankfully is injection and what happens here is we give a weekly injection for a number of weeks and then we give a monthly injection or a couple of injections a month apart. That kind of restocks those vitamin B12 levels within the body and hopefully we've tackled the underlying disease in that time and so normal resumption of absorption can then be maintained without the need for ongoing supplementation. But clearly we're also going to need to monitor your cat's B12 B12 levels quite closely during that supplementation course and also afterwards to make sure that they're not slowly decreasing and more supplementation needs to be given. Now, the difficulty with low B12 levels are that, yes, they are more likely to be associated with intestinal problems, but we don't always get overt diarrhea or vomiting with those diseases. If, the, if only a small amount of the intestine is infected, it may be that actually the stools look completely normal and you're not aware of that. So it could be that an ultrasound scan would be needed to try and diagnose that problem. Um, it could be that there are numerous other blood tests that can help with kind of tracking down that diagnosis but certainly there is the potential that maybe we should be testing for low B12 levels more often. I guess you know it's always a difficult balance between testing for things that are likely and things that are less likely and also the costs of these tests are not necessarily insignificant for many of us as well but if your cat is inappetent and there's no clear reason why they're going off their food maybe if they're showing some signs of dementia that has come on reasonably quickly then testing B12 levels is not a bad idea whether it's the underlying cause or not clearly is a big question. So definitely some food for thought there. And it really is a compromise, like I say, between testing for problems that we are expecting to be there or are likely to be there and testing for those that are maybe thought to be less likely because costs come down to things. And also, we don't want to just be taking blood samples, sticking your cat with needles on a whim. So, you know, it's all a balance. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic as well. You can catch me on social. I'm most active on Instagram these days. So you'll find me at Our Pets Health. Um, and I'd love to, to hear from you, hear what you think. And if you do follow me over on Instagram, you'll also get some behind the scenes content to see what's happening in the world of the Call the Vet show and Our Pets Health. And I also post some uh, clinical stories, some histories and some favourite patients of mine that I see in my general practice as well. So if that's something that you're interested in seeing, then definitely head over to Instagram and I'll look forward to seeing you there. But until next time, that's it for today's episode. I'm Dr. Alex. This is the Call the Vet show. Take care. Thanks for listening to Call the Vet. For full show notes and any links mentioned in today's show, head over to callthevet.org where you can also submit your question to be featured on an upcoming episode. We'll see you next time.